This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, specifically an updated World Chalice deck profile for December 2017. And now, all of the large-scale YCS level events have come to a close for the year of 2017, and we basically know what we need to be messing around with for the regional level events that are going to be dotted around in the months of December, January, and February until organized large-scale event play and events start resuming as they usually do around late January, early February. So we've got a couple months. This is definitely the Yu-Gi-Oh! off-season for winter. There's the one right after Nationals and then there's the one in winter. But So what we know is we know that Spiral is still the best deck in terms of it takes over 50% of the top cut slots at almost every major event, although other decks are capable of messing around with it after the November 2017 hits that Spiral sustained on the Forbidden and Limited list. So, what I have is I have the updated World Chalice list that I've been testing around with a lot. Um, there's still some changes that I might make to it for the sake of, you know, just playing it at, a, at random, like, low-tier regionals or whatever. Uh, but for the most part, this is my list that I've been messing around with and has given me a really good win rate against Spiral, as well as the other decks in the format that you have to respect because they are capable of hanging around with Spiral. Decks like Trickster, Light Sworn, BA, stuff like that. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into this deck. It is a 40-card deck, uh, starting out with three World Legacy World Chalice. You should definitely be running three of this card, no less. Uh, same with three Lee the World Chalice Fairy. If you're running any less than this, I don't know what kind of World Chalice deck you're trying to run, but it must be one on the next level. Uh, but then carrying on, two copies of World Chalice Guard Dragon, and again, two copies of Chosen by the World Chalice. I, I really like this 10-count lineup for World Chalice Monsters because... It allows your less than you know optimal hands to be at least full of potential World Chalice names. Uh, e Telly is strong for this card. Um, this card has fluctuated between two and one in my most recent builds. Uh, Guard Dragon has always been at least a two of because of its targeting protection has actually come up a lot. Uh, but I I really like ten. If anything, I might swap Chosen for a third Guard Dragon and just have one Chosen in my deck. Um, but even then, like I I need the vanillas. Like you usually need vanillas in your less than optimal hands. And so that is what that is there for. But carrying on, three copies of the Agent of Creation Venus and three copies of Mystical Shine Ball. This should be no uh, this should be no surprise to anyone, and you should honestly be playing this card if you're expecting your World Chalice deck to do well, because this is a one card that gives you this is one card that gives you four link materials, and that's huge. It also gets you vanillas, which is huge, as I've already said, um, and I've made clear in a few other videos, is that vanillas are what start your plays. Uh, that's why this deck is built around those three World Chalice vanillas. It's not just for lore reasons why they're vanillas. They're vanillas because they actually like really work well with the entirety of the deck, um, and like them being vanillas is actually huge. Like you could play a larger vanilla count of World Chalice monsters, and that actually arguably makes the deck run a bit smoother in terms of you always have starting cards for your plays because you always have vanillas. Um, but Venus is still just a huge combo enabler and combo extender and stuff like that. And this card only gets better once Extreme Force comes out and we get Skulldeet, because this is a one-card Skulldeet for four, uh, for four monsters that lets you draw four cards and put three cards that you don't want back on bottom of your deck. Uh, so Venus only gains value as, uh, as we go forward. Uh, because Venus into your three balls can, these, the two balls can be made into different link monsters with different names, and then you can go into Skulldeet. So, going into Extreme Force, that is definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, but then the best extender of the deck, by far, Exodius the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. This is 100% like my favorite card in the deck uh, to just draw top deck anything. Uh, the fact that it puts every monster back, no matter where it was, uh, into your extra deck or into your main deck is huge. Uh, it lets you really start running through resources pretty uh, pretty problem-free uh, if you start making mistakes in combos um, and start using extra link monsters out of your extract that you didn't need to use. This can help you reset, uh, which is huge because that means it uh, takes a lot of pressure off of you to make the most optimal play as possible if you have a couple of these waiting in the wings. Definitely a card I would run more of three if I could. <laughs> like, that card is insane. Uh, and then one Blackwing Gofu, the Vague Shadow. Uh, this is the only other, like starter that generates tokens uh, I've tried grinder golem but grinder golem doesn't really do a lot for you and it also makes you have to have the rest of your hand has to be like really really good because you can't normal summon for the rest of the turn so that turns off your seraph knight and your imduk additional normal summon and so that means that you can't get world legacy world chalice's effect when it was tribute summoned to go to grave to summon two from deck so like world Ch uh, world chalice can sort of play through that and around that 
But until we get cards like Skaldeet or like Security Dragon or whatever, this card is just superior to Grinder Golem. Um, but I have tested Grinder Golem. I just didn't like it in this current form and build with the resources we have access to. Akashic Magician is cool and all, but overall, Grinder Golem doesn't really do enough for this deck um, until we get Skaldeet. Because then Skaldeet, you can like special Venuses out of your hand and do all that sort of stuff. So. Things to consider. But anyway, the one Gym Knight for Brilliant Fusion. I had this in my last profile, and people keep commenting on that profile saying, Where's your Gym Knight at, bro? You left out Garnet. Like, no. I want my Garnet to have an effect. I, I play Lazuli. <laughs> like, drawing Garnet, even though it is a vanilla, and that does actually make some of your subpar hands better for this deck, uh, at the end of the day, you still drew a Garnet. And if you're having a normal summon that Garnet, your hand probably wasn't very good anyway. So you're really just, like, trying to play from behind. It's really weird. It's, it's one of those things where you can sort of justify it with this deck, but you really also can't. It's odd. But then as soon as, like, Skull Deep comes out as well, like, you can if you drew this, you just put it back on the bottom of your deck with just a one-card Venus play. Um, so, like, it, it just gets insane. Uh, there's, there's way too many things this deck gets to do once Extreme Force comes out. Uh, but then carrying on, we have a Hand Trap lineup that is uh, picked to ch uh, play against, like, Spiral and Draco and everything else. Uh, and that is one Max C, three Ash Blossom, two Ogre, and to draw and lock. I do not like more than eight. Uh, there was math that I did for this hand trap lineup, and I can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, but like I was originally playing four hand traps, which was the three C and the uh, uh, was the three Ash Blossom and the one C. Uh, but then like I just kept like getting stomped going second by Spiral that I couldn't like hand trap, and so like it just it became an issue. And so I don't really like Ghost Ogre, but I like Ghost Ogre more than I like having multiple draw and locks in my hand. Uh, so this is just the ratio that I settled on, and I can't remember the exact numbers for the math that I worked out for the hand traps, but it was like if you have 8 in the 40 card deck, you have like a 63-65% to 65 chance to draw 1 in your starting 5 cards, but only like a 15-17% to 17 chance of drawing 2. Um, and so like those were the most favorable numbers I found between like 6, 7, 8, and 9 uh, hand traps, um, or the full 10, which would be 3 Ghost Ogre, 3 Droll and Lot. Um, and, like, those were the numbers that I found that I liked the best in terms of statistical probability uh, via hypergeometric calculations. But, anyway, last monster in the main deck is the one of Gamma Seal to go with the Kyoto Waterfronts. This is the 30th monster. There's 30 monsters in my deck uh, and 10 spells and traps. And the one Gamma Seal goes with the two Kyoto Waterfronts. I was playing Scoldings. I was testing Scoldings. I was testing other things as well, like just more hand traps, uh, all that sort of stuff. Ultimately, I just came back to this. This is a tried-and-true engine. Um, like, replacing these with Scaldings is cool and all, it effectively, in theory, does the same thing, but the fact that Gamma Seal can be go drawn going second to slam over a monster, um, is huge. I think I would still be playing some form of Kaijus if I was going second without Kyoto Waterfront in my deck anyway, uh, because you can slam it over Sleeper, uh, you can slam it over opposing Trigate Wizards, or stuff like that. Um, so then, like, at that point, like, playing Kyoto just made sense. Like, I, I just, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, Solon Scalding, I'm just not. It's just not something. It's not a card that I can get behind when my entire deck is built around trying to combo around Venus as effectively as possible, which that usually means paying between fifteen hundred to forty five hundred life turn one, um, which is not something that I'm a big fan of paying three K for one trap for. Uh, but carrying on, three copies of Brilliant Fusion uh, to access your Lee and your Venus, and then one copy of a Foolish Burial to also do the same. Uh, should be pretty standard. And then for one ofs, I've got Soul Charge. I've got one Transmodify, E Telly, and Raigeki. Now, Raigeki could probably be cut for Upstart. Um, it's just another going second card that I really like. It could be cut for Upstart, or even probably cut for um, like Imperial Order, something to strengthen your going first um, scenarios. But Imperial Order conflicts with Kyoto Waterfront, so maybe not. Uh, because if you flip Order with Kyoto Waterfront up, Kyoto Waterfront suddenly has no effects and it loses all of its counters, so then your Gamma Seal is a vanilla, um, so like there's that to consider as well, but Raigeki is just one of those cards that I really like for clearing random boards uh, going second, um, but I cut down to one Transmodify, which is uh, should be strange, because I believe in my last list I was playing two or maybe even three. Um, Transmodify is just a card that, it's very high risk, high reward, and the more and more I was playing the deck, the more and more I realized that I was just not using Transmodify in the way that I thought that I would be using Transmodify. Uh, like, if you open with Lee Brilliant Fusion, that gets you to Venus. If you open, you can open with Venus straight. Uh, you have so many different ways to actually combo with this deck, um, without either, without, like, that, like, gets you to Venus. Um, like, even Exodius on that certain level. Like, you can, like, going second, you can summon an Exodius, um, with, like, a weak combo sequence. 
and then swing and use the Exodius to send Venus to Grave and then bring it back off Aura main phase 2 and then finish your combo out. Uh, so this is a card that's been slowly making its way down to zero copies in my deck. Uh, and it's always done that. That's the thing. Is I I'm, I'm shouldn't be surprised by this because it consistently does this every single time. I start with three in whatever list that I make, and then it slowly works its way down in quantities until I get to one, and then I just put it back up to two because I can't think of a 40th card, or it stays at one. Uh, now, it very well might come down to zero, um, and like Rageki and this might be taken out for a pair of Twin Twisters or something like that to again be more going second cards or even something like too evenly matched uh there's a lot of things that i still have yet to decide on um for this deck in terms of little small changes like that um if i were to play it at like a regional or something like i said earlier uh but yeah transmodify is one of those cards that i just can't find myself uh putting my faith in anymore um and it's not that it even gets ashed a lot it's just that like it's always in my hand doing nothing because i already had access to venus or I already had access to Lee Brilliant Fusion, and like the plays just automatically just occurred. Um, and like this deck is very good at playing through hand traps and playing around hand traps. And so introducing a card like Transmodify that's very naturally weak to hand traps uh, just seems like it's it seems like it just consistently fails uh, where it needs to be strong. Um, and so that's why it's been working its way down in quantity. And I haven't had any problems with the deck without Transmodify in it either. Um, so, there's that to consider as well. But anyway, for the extra deck, two copies of Firewall Dragon for Link 4s. For Link 3s, we have one Guy Saber, one Ningirsu, and one Trigate Wizard. The MVP being able to just literally summon a negation factor uh, without drawing Kyoto. One of my favorite aspects of this deck. Um, one Aurum, two Ebs, one Proxy Dragon for Link 2s. And then for Link 1s, two Link Spiders. I'm still a believer in two Link Spider. Uh, and three Imdux. And those are the only... Uh, Link monsters that I play, and then the 15th extra deck slot is the Gym Knight Seraph Knight for the Brilliant Fusion. I am not a believer in Boralode Dragon. Uh, I believe that card is nowhere near mandatory for any matchup other than True Draco, um, in which case I would rather play a full extra deck than like risk running in and like take the uh, what, what's the terminology I'm looking for? I'd rather take the risk against Draco. Uh, because I do have no main deck out to Draco other than the Gamma Seal. <laughs> um, and just side for the matchup. I would rather do that rather than just play a 14 card extra deck because I'm not a huge fan of Bora Load. Uh, all of the situations that, uh, except for dealing with Masterpiece on Monster Effects, um, all of the things that Bora Load provides can be provided by other already built in aspects of this deck. Like you have Ningirsu. Uh, and Trigate and Imduk uh, that specifically like out everything and then Firewall Dragon also on top of that uh, but specifically Ningirsu and Imduk like Ningirsu doesn't target uh, and Imduk doesn't target either and Imduk is like a Cataster so you can just summon it in the zone uh, below their extra monster zone on your field and you just end up uh, popping their monster uh, so like that's that's fine because it's a Cataster like effect uh, then you have Firewall to bounce you have Ningirsu to send without targeting you have Trigate to banish it does target, but it does just get rid of it. Um, and then for things that would be targeting your threats, um, or things that would be threatening you through uh, through like targeting effects, like on your link monsters, you can just like circumvent that by holding guard dragons, uh, which is another reason why the card could get bumped up to three. Is that it is a pretty solid like uh, protection net for your plays um, from targeting uh, from targeting effects because it's literally guard dragon is if your opponent targets your linked monster, which means that. Any monster that has a link monster pointing to it, or if it's a link monster pointing at something, is a linked monster. So, as soon as your plays start taking up structure, uh, like, everything is linked to one another. So, like, Guard Dragon is just infinite value um, in those situations. Like, it's ABC Dragon Busters and True Draco Spells and Traps and things like that. Um, but all of that considered, that is it for this deck profile. As always, guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Any suggestions or any questions or whatever, I'll do my best to answer those questions. All that sort of stuff and nonsense. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are, again, in the comments down below. And links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, Patreon is the best way to do so. Helps out a ton, and you'd have my eternal gratitude if that's something you'd like to do. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you've already done. Thanks for watching, as I've already said. Thanks for your time, as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.
All right, so now that the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, a lot more than you may ever know, and you have my eternal gratitude. You guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.